This is Mr. Van Kaplan today. We're going to learn about using constraints in Autodesk Inventor. So you need to open a new English Standard Inch IPT file. And I want you to start a 2D sketch in the XY plane. And we've used these tools. You've done some basic 2D sketches in the first lessons, one through three. Today we're going to learn about these constrained tools. First thing I want you to do is draw a circle. Let's dimension that to two inches. And then I want you to draw a line. Let's dimension that to three inches. Uh, one thing I like to do, always make sure you don't have any tools on. Right now I'm on the dimension, so I'm going to right click OK. That would allow me to move the circle if I grab it in the center point. The line as well. And you can see I can move this line anywhere. With the constraints tool, we're going to control that. The first thing we're going to do, and if you hold it, hover over them, it tells you we're going to do a coincident constraint. And it tells you what it does there. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to click into the center point of my circle and this line. Okay, once I'm done that, I right click OK. And then you see, however I move that line, okay, it's always passing through that center point. Okay? The next thing I want you to do, we're going to draw two lines. And you can also double click to end the line. I'm right clicking and hitting OK. So you can double click like that and do it as well. Let's add a dimension here. Let's say 2.5. For this one, let's say. 3.2. Okay. Earlier we did a coincident constraint. Now we're going to do a collinear constraint. Okay. So I'm going to click on this line and this line. Let's see what happens. Okay. Makes them the same line. And then I can move them. Okay. And they're connected. So that's a collinear constraint. Okay, you can see I don't, they don't have to be connected to each other, but they're in line with each other no matter what. Okay? So that's collinear. Some constraints are put into Inventor by default. They do that automatically. Okay? So if you right click, usually we're hitting OK or finish 2D sketch, we'll do later. But you can click here and say show all constraints and it shows me. There's my collinear. Okay, it's not showing my concentric strength, but that's okay. So right click. You can hide all constraints as well. Okay. Um, one cool thing you can do, you can click on your trackball on your mouse and move left to right and it lets you pan out. Okay, so let's do that. And now we're gonna do a concentric constraint, okay, and it tells you, causes them to have the same center point. So we're going to draw a circle. We're actually going to draw two of them. Let's dimension this one to 2.5 inches. This one to 1.5 inches. And then we're going to use, again, I like to get off the dimension, we're going to use the concentric constraint. Click that. Click on the outer part of the circle and it puts them together. Okay, I right click OK and now I move this circle they stay together. So that's a pretty useful tool when we get into some more difficult ones. Okay. 
there's several. There's parallel, there's perpendicular, vertical, sorry, and horizontal. We'll look at all those in just a moment as well. Uh, the light, the lock one, it makes them just lock in and you can't move them. So let's say I draw a line here. Let's dimension it. <clears throat> Put a dimension of 4.5 on it. Okay, make sure you're off the dimension tool. Right click OK, then let's lock this line. Okay, it's deleted, but it's there. Okay, let me get off of that. So now I can't move that line at all. And it tells you it is horizontal to this axis and it's locked. Okay, I can right click on that. And let's see. Show all constraints. It shows that. You can right click and delete constraints. We got rid of it all together. I didn't want that. Okay. And that lock's still there. Okay, you click on the tool and then the constraint and then right click delete it. I deleted the line that first time. Let me undo that. So now that's there again. Okay. Uh, let's use the pan tool again and move down here into this quadrant. Let's draw some lines. And this is where you got to be careful. Sometimes in Vendor, if you do draw lines that are too similar to each other, it automatically puts a parallel constraint on them, which we don't like that. So I'm going to make a diagonal going this way. And I'm also going to make one going this way. Let's throw dimensions on there. Two inch and a three inch. Okay. Make sure and get your dimension tool off. I'm right clicking and hitting OK. You can also go up there and uh, you do have to do that. Right click OK to get off of that. The next thing I want to do, I'm going to use the parallel constraint. So I click that. You can see it's lit up. I'm going to click on this line and this line and watch what happens. Okay, it flips them and now they're parallel to each other. So I can move this one, move this one. But they're still, the way that those lines are going, they're parallel to each other. Okay, pretty handy uh, when you get into some more difficult sketches. Let's do a perpendicular. Okay, draw your two lines and then we want to dimension them like always. Let's say three. And here let's say 3.6. Okay. Turn your dimension tool off. And now let's do a perpendicular constraint. Click that line. Click this line. And you notice how it did that? It made that perpendicular to it. Okay. Instead of being it slanted at an angle, now it is vertical. Okay, so I'm going to right click OK and watch if I move this line. Okay, they're perpendicular to each other. And it would pass through, it would cross it at some point. Uh, another handy tool to use. Okay, uh, vertical. We're going to look at horizontal and vertical constraints. So let's say I draw two lines. that were, appear to be perpendicular. Oops. Let's dimension those. Three is fine. Make that one 2.5. And turn our dimension tool off. Now let's do the horizontal. And it tells you and shows you an example. So I'm going to click this one. Click this line. Don't click that point where it turned green. bet I've got a perpendicular constraint. Let's see. I do. I'm going to delete that. Delete that. Try it again. Here. Here. Now they're horizontal to each other. So you have to be careful. Sometimes it puts constraints on them. We don't. Anytime you do that, you just go to show all constraints and then you can delete them. Okay? Uh, other lines. Let's draw a diagonal. 
try not to make them parallel. That's the tough part to anything. Okay. Dimension here, two inches. Same here, two inches. And now let's try the vertical constraint. Show our constraints. Not any there. And now you can see those are vertical constraints. Okay, right click OK. And the last thing we're going to look at, we're going to look at the tangent and the symmetric. Okay. So let's pan over to the right here. Let's draw a circle. Draw a line. I'm going to add our dimension. Let's make this line four. Circle three. Get off our dimension tool, and now let's do the tangent line. Okay. That'd be the outside of the circle, then the line. We'll right click OK and then watch this. This line, we're going to move it and it stays on the outer the circumference of that circle. Okay? For the last one, we're going to draw some lines. Okay, make sure they're all connected. Okay? Uh, we've been dimensioning them, so why stop now? 2, 2.2, 4, okay? And now we're going to use the symmetric constraint. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, right click OK, and then watch any time you move this, those three lines are connected somehow. Okay? I don't like the way that looks really. Okay. Put your constraints on. Show all constraints. They're symmetric. If I drag this line up, down, it keeps them to where they're symmetric. That point keeps them all connected. Okay? So we're done with that. Uh, should have several different drawings here. I'm going to save this file. Save as. Make sure and find your folder. I've got one specifically for screen casting. I'll name it Lesson 4, and you name it Mr. V, Lesson 4, and be sure and save that. And that's it for this time, okay? On the next one, you're going to do Lesson 5, you learn how to do extrusions, you will actually get into 3D shapes instead of two-dimensional shapes.